I used to be addicted to worrying and it might sound crazy and weird but I didn't realize it before I kind of snapped out of it and why would anyone be addicted to worrying? That's the question I've started to go through after I realized how many years I spent in this constant state of worrying. Or actually, I didn't always live like this. It began when I thought that I need to become an adult and also when I became a father. The reason for this that I've now uncovered is that I've lived a pretty wild life when I was a young adult and I avoided responsibility and I avoided growing up because for me Growing up was starting to worry about stuff because that was the model I got from home. And I don't know if that was the actual case. That was how I perceived it. That when you grow up, you need to start worrying. And this was in my subconscious mind. It was like this, that my logical mind couldn't, figure out. I've just realized it afterwards. And I think if it's happened to me, it has to have happened to somebody else too. Because our subconscious mind that I've now realized is being programmed when we're small. Specifically from the day we're born up till about seven years old. And if your environment is worrying and uh, kind of in this survival state, that's the basic state your internal world will try to get to. It's the familiar. That's why it's also like family, familiar and family. It's so crazy when you realize that, oh, I don't need to worry. I don't need to have permission to not worry. I don't need permission to be happy or just to be free. It's your birthright. But we are so conditioned into all these different belief systems and kind of rules how we are supposed to be and how we are supposed to live. And breaking these beliefs and breaking these kind of rules that we've so at some point we've decided that it should be like this. And it's like our, un our subconscious mind decides that, oh, this is how life works. And, and this, okay, this is how I'm supposed to be. Okay, this is how adults are. And these are the values I need to live by. And, and, and all these things that we teach to children. And, and this has also been like a really big reflective thing because I have a three-year-old son and, and it's like, okay, what beliefs do I want to teach him? Because I don't want him to, to be in this mindset of, of, yeah, you need to be afraid. You need to worry. Oh, you need to, uh, be afraid of running out of money or something like that. And it affects the rest of your life. And I know how difficult the internal work can be when you have to kind of reprogram your mind and be like, okay, I need to unlearn so much stuff that I thought was the truth. And one of my mentors said that once he understood that all our beliefs are decisions that we've made in the past and we've decided that something that was said to us is going to be the truth. 
And once that truth is installed, that's when our ego and our brain starts to defend that viewpoint. It's the same why there's so many different political parties and religions and, and all these institutions that people are defending because they believe in them. Their subconscious is programmed to believe in them and it needs a lot of conscious effort and new decisions to change that especially if it comes from the outside. The trick here that I've found and that I've learned recently is that you can reprogram your subconscious mind with your awareness and with your will because when you kind of start to prove yourself wrong, prove your old version wrong, that's when change starts to happen. And you need to have a system to kind of not relapse back into the old belief system. But this is what I've done with this, with this worrying. Because I hope nobody has to go through the same worrying and stressing that I've been through. Because it's not necessary. And... Actually, the whole worrying and stressing has only made my life worse in, in terms of, of external things and, and money and stuff like that. Because the time I've used to worry and stress and be like totally out of it, feeling like I'm totally worthless, I could have used that time being happy, joyful, empowered, and kind of build something great of it. And I know that I have a reason why I have gone through this extended period of time where I've struggled and felt like complete shit. Because this is what I'm here to help people realize. This is what I know how to do. I know how you can change your internal belief system, your internal voice to be more positive, to see more opportunities and to be like, that's not for me. And every time there's a struggle or a negative emotion, if you use it as a sign to improve, the whole game changes. It's like anxiety is on the same, it's the same energy as excitement. It's just the different polarities. Once you realize this and you start using anxiety as a tool to be like, okay, anxiety comes. This has to be some kind of limiting belief inside my mind. Otherwise, I wouldn't feel like this. Okay, what does my mind try to tell me? And then you switch over to excitement and be like, oh, let's go find it. I'm excited. What will I find? And that's when you can turn anxiety into excitement. And it's, it's been like the biggest change in my life because I, I was just miserable and I was just like blaming everything else and, and all the external things like, yeah, I can't be happy before I have this. And, and yeah, 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 I'll stop stressing when I have this other thing. And then when I get to do this one thing, then I'm just going to relax. Guess what? It never happened. And it actually had to get a lot worse before I realized that, oh, it's my own limiting beliefs and my own programming that is keeping me stuck. I'm not willing to give up because I'm so used to being in this survival state. And at any given moment, there's actually only two states you can be in and it's survival states that's like negative emotions and worry and fear and kind of this fight or flight mode that your nervous system is in and then there's the potential state and this is when you're relaxed you're excited you're joyful so my new rule of living is 
whenever I go into this survival state, the only job I have is to get back up into the potential state. Because we are all energy and our minds are like radio receivers. And when we are in survival state, our brain only sees uh, ideas and potential just to survive. And you kind of block out all the amazing possibilities that may require some risk or it's out of your comfort zone because you're already struggling and your brain is just like, no, no, let's keep in the safety zone. And it wants to keep you in the familiar, all the knowledge and stuff that you've done in your past. And, and this is why people who live in a survival state, they keep repeating their past over and over again. Only when you transfer into the potential state, can you access better ideas more powerful connections and, and more coincidences and synchronicities that can happen in the benefit from you. That's how you grow. If you want to grow your business, if you want to have a better relationship, it's not going to come from a survival state. It's the only place you can really thrive and, and grow yourself, improve yourself is from this potential state. That's why I call it potential state. Some people call it powerful state, but for me, it's, it's better to have like survival or potential because there's so much more potential in everyone and our own mind and our programming is keeping us stuck in the familiar because that's what we're used to. And the ego is there to protect us and the ego only knows the logical mind. It's, it's kind of whole purpose of existence is to keep you safe. And if you're in flight and fight and flight mode, like the survival state, it will do everything to keep you safe. So in the familiar, and this is why so many people fail to break out of their miserable life and this vicious circle, addictive circle, because they don't get to do this stuff that they get into a, a potential state, a better future, something that your mind can't perceive yet. And, and this is when we get into visualizations and, and kind of make creating goals and stuff like that. That's the path forward. But when you're in survival state, you can't even visualize. It's like your stress is clouding all your, your amazing abilities to create a future for yourself because it keeps you stuck in the past. And this is what I've found to be my purpose. And I have a new coaching program that I'm running a beta test group. I have five slots to test out this new concept of really switching into a potential state and, and rewiring your brain from all these limiting beliefs. When you identify a limiting beliefs, I have a process, a framework, how you can prove yourself wrong. And this way you can rewire your brain and you actually eliminate the limiting beliefs permanently. So what I'm now looking for is five persons to preferably entrepreneurs who wants to kind of get over this cycle of worrying and stressing and overthinking and, and get into this potential state where all the miracles in life will happen. That's where all the great things are in the unknown. So if you feel uh, a resonance to this messaging, please check the link in the description for more info. And if you see this video later, you might be able to join a wait list for a future program like this, probably better refined. But for now, I'm only looking for five 
people and it's first served first principles so check that in the link in bio but back to this whole being addicted to worrying and and i can tell from experience that my relationship with my partner and my kid it's been really tough for them because of my addiction to worrying because even if i succeed even if i sign clients even if i succeeded in the things that i really wanted to do i wanted to go surfing and i thought that that's that was going to make me happy well it didn't because then was the next thing yeah but i still need to have this other thing and then yeah i have this second and third thing that i need to figure out before i can be happy and that was just like this never ending cycle of just complaining and worrying and and just feeling like a total loser and that's not the way to live your life and and when i was like a young adult i never used to stress about anything yeah i was addicted to alcohol and weed and and porn and stuff like that to to kind of numb the whole thing so so i wouldn't suggest that either but now when i'm kind of cleared out all the other addictions i realized and and that was why i realized that oh shit there there has to be another thing because i thought that all these external addictions was making me miserable and then i realized that even if I'm without them, I'm still feeling miserable. And that's when I kind of went deep into the mind and I started researching this whole thing about mindset and belief systems and, and uh, like behavioral psychology. And I've like, it was just like, what? Is it this simple that you can kind of identify your belief, your limiting belief? You can make a new decision and you can find proof why this new decision is better than the old one. And that's when your old mind starts to change. And I've had these limiting beliefs for so long, so it's natural for them to kind of try to come back and take over. But now I understand, I have it in my logical mind that, oh, once I recognize this trigger that wants to take me back into this kind of misery and sorrow and, and be like worrying, I'm like, okay, I need to do something. Okay, then I take action. I go for a walk. I, I, I do a small workout. I, I start writing out why this limiting belief has triggered me and, and what my new decision will be. And it just works every time. And... It, 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 it gives me chills because it feels like I found a magic pill to use with myself. And sure, I, I also have help from my, from my partner who, who kind of brainstorms with me and, and helps me see kind of the, the faults in my old limiting beliefs. And, and that also helps me get forward. And that's why I suggest like when you start going through your limiting beliefs and, and you start improving your kind of emotional states that you need to have someone to talk to because that's going to be so important. It's, it's kind of like a lifeline that you can hang on to every time if you try to slip back into the, the old habits of worrying because it's essentially, it's just a habit and uh, we all know how habits are formed. It's like re repeated action is how you form a habit. It's said that 21 days of something can, can change a habit. So that's why you need to kind of give yourself this grace period of, of at least three weeks, just consciously tell yourself like every time if this one limiting belief comes up, you're just gonna rewire and, and make a dis new decision to be like, nope, I don't believe that anymore. And, and this is how you can really change. And this is also why I want to give the opportunity to, to coach people because 
with with a coach the biggest thing is the accountability it's like okay did you do all these things you said that you're gonna do did you do this limiting belief exercise every day did you intentionally uh, rewire your brain because that's the only thing that's gonna give you the results it's the same as going to the gym if you want to get fit it's like it doesn't help that you buy the gym membership you actually have to go there and, and stay consistent and and do it you don't have to be perfect all the time that's also a limiting belief because we're humans and uh, we're perfect as imperfect beings and there's so many different limiting beliefs you can have and and there's i'm gonna make other videos about this but worry and stress and and that you keep yourself in that familiar because of some past de decision in your childhood or teens that's the worst and that was for me the biggest game changer to to let go of the worry and be like i'm actually better off when i'm not worrying and i've been able to do it in the like worst financial situation ever and and like the whole external world feels like collapsing and I found it here, here and I know that you don't have to go that far you can start changing your limiting beliefs without like feeling like dying and being like what is happening to me so once again if you feel this is something that you need please check the link in description and if you just enjoy these videos and the information I share I'm I'm gonna do more of this because it's something I enjoy and that's I think the world really needs this kind of information more and and encouraging messages to to for you to become your your most powerful self because we need more people who are empowered we don't need more factory workers and, and people who obey the system we need more people who think with their own brains and and feel powerful and that's what i'm here to do i only want to help you as far as you feel powerful and then my mission is done it's like that's what i'm here for to empower people and to kind of get out of internal resistance because that's how you achieve your dream life okay I think that's it for today's video. My name is Mitz and uh, yeah, please comment what you think and uh, like this video if you liked it, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.